mode. Good morning and welcome to the Bruker webinar series. My name is Steve Minnie and I'm the Director of Applications for the AFM unit at Bruker and I'll be moderating today's session. Today's presentation is titled In-Situ Monitoring of Lithium Battery Electric Process Using an Integrated AFM Glove Box, Focusing on Solid Electrolyte Interface or SEI Formation on HOPG as Observed by Peak Force Tapping. We encourage you to ask questions by entering them in the box on the right side of your screen and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. Those we don't get to, we will follow up with you offline. Also, to help us to continuously improve the webinar series, please take the survey at the end of the presentation. Our presenter today is Dr. Chun Zing Lee. Chun Zing received his PhD in physical chemistry in 1993 from Zymen University in China under the supervision of Professor Zhao Wu Tian on developing one of the first in situ ECSTM systems. He did postdocs at Beijing University and Florida International University before joining VICO, which is now Bruker, in 2000. At Bruker, he has led product and application developments of Bruker EC products. Chen Zing has 19 years of AFM experience, 23 peer-reviewed publications, and one patent. I will now turn it over to Dr. Chen Zing Li. Good morning, and thanks for uh, thanks Steve for the introduction. Uh, as uh, Steve already told you, we are going to uh, introduce you a tool uh, for your lithium battery work. Now we have a new mode, uh, peak force tapping mode, and we have a best top, uh, performing AFF. AFF. We want to bring this capability to you for your research, uh, lithium battery research. We know that you, uh, there are many tools that can be used for characterization of materials and the processes of lithium battery. Now these two, where these two stands, where this uh, in situ AFM uh, function stands in your toolbox, uh, it is to in situ monitor electrochemical processes on the nanometer length scale, not only topography and also mechanical properties. So this talk will uh, have three sessions. First, I will introduce you or go over the basics of peak force tapping mode and its, its benefit. And then uh, I'll talk about the design that makes this tool suitable for lithium battery work. And then I'll showcase uh, the capability on the uh, actual data on the formation of solid electrolyte interface on graphite. So I'll start by introducing the peak force tapping mode, AFM, so how it works. So uh, I know a lot of you have been using AFM and you know very well how contact mode and the tapping mode work. And you also know how critical it is to control the force. Peak force tapping mode is a new way which came out two years ago and it, it, it gives a new way to control the force precisely. This is how it works. Simply, we modulate the chip position up and down. So on the left, right, on the left plot, on the top, you see how the chip moves. The, the Z position of the chip moves up moves down and up. So when the tip approaches the surface, the force is recorded. So at point A, when the tip is really far away from the surface, the force is none, it's zero. And at point B, the tip feels the attractive force or the capillary force and it's, it's snapped into the surface. And uh, about that point, the attractive, the repulsive force will, will deflect the tip up. At the closest point, C, the force peaks. That's the maximum force you can uh, uh, activate on the chip. Now if you turn around and retract the tip from the surface, you see at point D uh, where the tip will snap off from the surface and then when the tip retract far away from the surface, the force goes back to zero again. 
So literally, we get a force distance curve at each tapping cycle. So on the right, it's a force distance curve you know very well. Now, in the imaging, during imaging, what we do is we control the peak force, the maximal force, and maintain that a constant, and we get, get an image. So this is a basic of peak force tapping mode. Now I want to point to you what's the major benefit of this mode. Shown here is an image of protein. It's an outmembrane protein. On the right side, it's a high resolution. The scan size is 100 nanometers. And the force we used here is 50 piconewton. This is done in liquid, in fluid. What you can see is you can see each individual protein molecules. And also, you can see uh, the protein actually, the pore of the protein is actually open. So this uh, membrane is very fragile, and it's hard to image. But with peak force tapping mode, since we can control, the, control a very small force and uh, precisely so we can, we can see it with relative ease and a high, re high resolution. So I want to this image is not, I, I don't think you uh, you are really interested in protein. The message I want I want to get across, get across is you can get a high resolution on very fragile samples. The other thing, now we know we can get a force distance curve at each point at each pixel. What we can learn from this force distance curve from the pulling off point, we can see we can calculate the adhesion force between the chip and sample. So this is the dip, and this is the baseline. The, the difference is the adhesion. And also, you can, you can see how much the chip indents or deforms into the, into the sample. You get a deformation, which is a direct matter of the hardness of the sample. From the slope, of this retracting branch or the force curve, you can get a stiffness. And we fit it in the GMT module, we, module, model, and we, we can get the modulus or the, or the material. So uh, with peak force Q and M, which is based on peak force technical mode, you can get, in addition to height, that's topography, and you can also get other mechanical properties like modulus, adhesion, uh, dissipation, deformation at one shot simultaneously. So what what do we what you can use uh, the mechanical property is I will give you one example which is relevant to lithium battery work. In this example, uh, that's a modulus modulus map of a multi-component polymer. It's the cable insulation material. There, we know there are three different polymers blended in there. However, we don't know how they distribute, how they mix together. With a modulus map, you can see there are three different levels. The, the bright light color, the A, and the uh, medium blue color, B, and the dark color, C. So you can see, uh, if you compare the Module, moduli or those uh, measured on the map with the bulk uh, moduli or the e of each polymer, you know how they distribute, how they mix together. So the mechanical property, property uh, help you to assign or to differentiate different materials in a mix. This is relevant because in lithium battery materials, uh, usually it is uh, it is a composite material. For example, it has active materials, it has conductive additives, and a polymer binder to hold them together. So you really want to know how they mix, how they distribute. So that's the benefit of peak force tapping mode and a peak force QM. It works on very fragile samples and give you high resolution, and also the mechanical properties can help you uh, 
help you see how different components come together. Uh, shown in this image is our flagship uh, best performing uh, AFM, Dimension Icon AFM. Now we have this new mode, PicForce Techno mode, PicForce QM, and we have a, a very uh, a, a good performing AFM. Now we, our goal is to make this available to you for in situ lithium battery work. Well, basically, we um, really did uh, uh, two things. All right, two things. One, we need to design an electrochemical cell. Um, so this is an overview um, of the cell, how the electrochemical cell fits in, into the FM. What you see here is the FM head uh, on top there, and underneath is the uh, fluid cantilever holder and the electrochemical cell. And there's a plug, of course, that's a, uh, for the uh, EC cell. Now, uh, more detail of this uh, setup. On this chart, actually, there's a heater underneath the cell. It goes from room temperature to 65 degrees Celsius. And here's the cell which shows you the sample is your working electrode. And the, it accommodates, the cell accommodates sample as large as 40 millimeters, and also it, uh, it works for small samples. The, the region shape is the counter electrode, and also there's a reference electrode shown here. I want to point out, um, on the right side, there's a spring clips that holds the electrodes. That's, where, that's really a nice uh, use or use feature, so we can simply lift the spring and, uh, and uh, tuck the wire underneath to make the connection. The other thing is this the materials used are compatible with lithium battery solvents. <clears throat> now let's, uh, this is a blow-up of this uh, electrochemical cell. And so uh, bottom is, there's a bottom uh, part in the, your sample, the uh, O-ring, uh, the, uh, the uh, Teflon or Cal F insert in the top part. I want to point out here is it's a closed cell. It's a, it, 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 it's designed to seal. Uh, on the bottom you have O-ring, on the top you have O-ring, and on the top also you have a glass cover to, to seal the cell. Uh, the way it seals is actually on the glass cover you see a hole there. But once the AF, that's for the AFM uh, chip or the holder to access the sample. So you lower the holder into the sample and then there's a gasket on the holder that will cover the glass so it will seal this cell. The reason is uh, you know really well. So for lithium battery, uh, in lithium battery the solvent used is organic carbonate is carbonate and uh, uh, most of them are very evaporative, very volatile. And uh, when you do lithium battery, let's say charging, discharging, uh, or when you do slow cyclic voltage, it takes a long time. So it, it could uh, last for uh, many hours or even days. So just give you, uh, give you one example how uh, this seals the cell. We actually put this one put uh, one molar LIPF6 and uh, ethylene carbonate with two um, uh, dimethyl carbonate. And you know dimethyl, dimethyl carbonate is very evaporative. And in that solution, we, uh, you know, we leave the cell for or weekend more than actually 40 hours. 48 hours, uh, only 20%, uh, uh, less than 20% uh, uh, liquid evaporated, evaporated over the weekend. I would say 10 percent in less than 10 percent within 24 hours. So it is used really well. <clears throat> now the next thing 
uh, we want to uh, introduce to you, or actually we have to do is uh, to control the environment. For lithium battery work, it has to be done in a very stringent environment to control the uh, water level has to be really low, the oxygen level has to be low. Um, we know some people use dry box or just a, a, a dry box, and uh, here we really bring you the ultimate environmental control. We put the AFM, the, here the dimension icon, into a glove box. It looks like a very straightforward, but we do have to take care of a few things. Uh, for AFM, you know it doesn't like noise, so we have a very sturdy supporting structure. It's not the conventional uh, glove box. The supporting structure is much, much more sturdy. It's customized. And, and underneath the uh, ICON AFM, there's an active vibration isolation table to further isolate noise from AFM. And for the glove box, if it reach, it reach uh, below one ppm, both oxygen and water content. It's so the uh, the performance and the uh, functionalities of both the glove box and the AFM are not compromised here. To make all those functions and modes available inside the glove box, uh, uh, you can see we have a, a quite a complex fit through panels. It, uh, it uh, uh, has all those connectors there and, and the controls there. That's how we make all those <coughs> modes functions available inside the glove box. For example, you can do uh, pick forward, um, uh Tuna that's you know to measure conductivity inside the glove box and, and Kevin probe force microscopy all those modes are available inside the glove box. Now I'm um, I'm thrilled that, uh, to show you some uh, data that the in situ monitoring of uh, SEI layer a solid electrolyte interface formation on charging. Uh, of Upon charging, so uh, first the uh, for the electrochemical control part, uh, we uh, the product is packaged with uh, CH760D uh, by potential set from CH instruments, and I I want to point out the AFM the Globus AFM is compatible with other uh, potential set other models, and the potential current are read by the nanoscope software so we can display simultaneously with the imaging, uh, with the images, and you can do correlation with AMPAM image, for example, you know, why you see this kind of topography or this kind of mechanical properties uh, at such potential. So you can do correlation uh, that will help you analyze the data. Um, now the uh, process. So again, uh, on, uh, what we did is on um, HOPG as an anode, as an anode, we know you know probably you are not quite interested in HOPG because it's a well-studied system. Actually, for that same for that uh, same token, we use uh, HOPG because it's a model system and that, that um, we know how it behaves. Uh, so uh, we can uh, check out whether. Uh, whether the product gives you gives you the correct information or new information you you are expecting. So um, uh, first, what we do is we uh, we take take an image of the anode here HOPG and before we do charging. So literally, we uh, we did that at a certain uh, open circuit potential uh, on the actually on the lower right you see. That's a uh, open circuit potential, and uh, it is 3.3 volts. And actually, uh, we we measured you know 2.5 all the way to uh, to 3.4 something, uh, depending on the um, on the, uh, the the condition. But here it's a 3.3 volt, 
And uh, the images shown above is, on the left, that's the topography. It's really uh, an, uh, a flat uh, graphite uh, HOBD surface that shows the small steps. They are, the height scale is only uh, 6 nanometers. And what I want to point out is, uh, in the Pickford QNM data, the adhesion and modulus data, we see very, very uh, stark contrast there. Although you see nothing or you cannot discern any uh, difference on the height, but on the adhesion and modulus, we see uh, a good contrast there. So, yeah, honestly, we don't know what it is, but it must be some absorption uh, layer on the surface and where it shows higher adhesion and a higher modulus. Um, the nature of this layer, we don't know. We just know it's, it must be a very thin layer. And uh, we see this quite often. About uh, a third of the time, we'll see this absorption and uh, other times so we don't see uh, this nice adhesion modulus map there. Maybe that means uh, the, the absorption um, uh, happens only at, uh, we don't know, we don't know exactly, you know, why it's happening there, but uh, here you can see that, which you don't see on the, uh, on, from the topography. So. Now, uh, <clears throat> we want to follow the uh, charting uh, the morphology change or the surface change when we chart the uh, uh, chart the anode. So we, what we use is constant current charting. For example, the top shows you actually the bottom shows the, shows you how the the current profile. You let's say initially uh, you you oh, well in this case actually the, uh, uh, here we do uh, discharge first and then charging, so uh, discharge at a, a 20 microamperes and then charging at 20 mi uh, microamperes there. So was, uh, on the top is the potential uh, profile, potential versus time, and the <coughs> reference electrode is lithium foil. Here's a, uh, again, it's a charging curl and uh, at 50 microamperes per square centimeter in one molar uh, LIPF6 ECDEC. And, and now let's take a look of the image. And uh, first, for, first the image uh, at an open circuit potential, it's, uh, it's a nice clean HOBG surface, typical. And when you start charging, and you can see um, here again, the uh, charging curve, and on top is the morphology. I want here I scale the image and the uh, and the charging plot uh, to the same time scale, so you can correlate. And what you can see is uh, when you charge from uh, here 2.5 volt all the way to uh, 1.5 volt, the surface doesn't change almost doesn't change. You cannot see anything on the topography. And after the first plateau, after the first plateau, you start to see uh, some layer is, for, is forming on the surface. And uh, uh, going right, you can see the layer is growing thicker and thicker, and the surface is getting rougher and rougher. So, uh, and as the uh, potential stabilize around the 0.8 volt, the the uh, the the SEI layer uh, thickness will grow, but the roughness stays about the same. So you can really monitor how the uh, how the SEI SEI layer uh, forms. I would point out that the SEI layer is really 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 fragile, and we have to use a uh, uh, small force. In this case, uh, we are using one nano Newton force and uh, a so uh, we could use a smaller force. Uh, I'll show you images later on. Um, if we
we use uh, uh, what what happens if what will happen if we use a, a higher force, for example, ten nanonewton force, peak force, and what happens is you can actually scratch away uh, the SEI layer and expose the uh, the uh, HOBG uh, substrate. So here, uh, we initially we did a five micrometer scan, and then we changed it to a ten micrometer scan. Immediately, you see a hole or square uh, in the center that uh, where the SCR layer is is wiped away. What you can and uh, from this actually it's very handy. You can measure you know how what's the thickness of this SCR layer. You do a cross section, you see it. Uh, can be as thick as 100 nanometers. Actually, it grows over time, but uh, after 100 nanometers, uh, the growth is, uh, is slows down uh, significantly. Uh, the other detail I want to point out is now I put uh, the uh, the uh, again the, on the left. You know how the SER layer grows over time. In the center is uh, where the SER layer is uh, scraped away. On the right side. It's the initial graphite substrate before charging, and you can see um, those features are still there. Those steps are there, but the after the SCR layer uh, uh, is scraped away, the substrate is not exactly the same as the initial state. Uh, what uh, notably you see some blisters or swe swelling uh, in this layer. What are they? So, and we have some uh, postulation there. We think you know maybe some lithium ion gets uh, under the graphite layers, or maybe some solvent gets in there. Uh, how do we know uh, what what's that? Um, here is a look at the blisters. Use uh, peak force Q and M. Uh, so literally, we use the AFM po uh, probe to poke those blisters to see whether it's you know, it's softer. If it's softer, that may mean uh, solvent get get in there. It's like you poke your finger finger on a pouch of water, so you, it it'll be softer. And also, we look at the adhesion. Uh, so adhesion is only sensitive to the top layer. So what we see here is again on the left, you uh, that's the graphite. But you see the graphite actually uh, the uh, topography, and you see there are something. Uh, you know, of some blisters there, and uh, if we look at the modulus, and uh, you can see, uh, you can see uh, the uh, the uh, modulus on those uh, on those uh, blisters are slightly lower than the than the than the graphite. Uh, even here, there's a blister, and uh, uh, it has a darker shade, so it's slightly lower. Than the uh, graphite surface, and here is a bigger patch uh, uh, where we believe uh, um, <clears throat> uh, solvent intercalation uh, uh, happened, and also down there. So uh, the blister does appear to be less stiff, uh, less stiff than the uh, bare graphite. How about adhesion? On the, on the, in the same area, the adhesion actors uh, are similar, like graphite, which means the top layer on top of this uh, blister really is still graphite. So that's the information um, you can you can learn from uh, the mechanical properties um, uh, of the uh, sample. Um, the other thing we really want to uh, understand is on the SEI layer, uh, you know, what are, what's the composition of the SEI layer? We know there may be some lithium salt or some uh, polymer, polymeric materials, and uh, we think their modulus should be different. If it's a salt, the modulus, the modulus should be higher. If it's a polymer, it should be softer. There uh, on modulus, we do see some contrast, but it's not a great. The reason uh, 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 is so to get the mechanical properties, especially the modulus, we need to use higher force. And however, the SEI layer 
is, uh, is rather fragile that uh, prevent us from using hair modulus. We need to figure out a way to to uh, get this done, maybe by slowing uh, the slowing down the uh, uh, measurement. Uh, but if if we can differentiate the polymer component and the solid component, that will give great insight to uh, the SEI uh, formation. So. Um, that's uh, that's pretty much what I want to uh, show you. Uh, uh, to summarize, what we have here is uh, we bring to uh, automate environmental control. Uh, it gives you one below one ppm oxygen and water. That's that's absolutely needed for lithium battery work. And uh, we have a electrochemical cell. Uh, it's it's designed to seal really well. And uh, it's designed to uh, uh, for its own use. What what can really benefit you is also the ex exclusive peak force tapping mode, which works really well on fragile samples, and also it's uh, the peak force QM that gives you quantitative nano mechanical properties, which you can use to uh, to understand uh, intercalation. Uh, to understand what's a component in the SEI layer. And all those are done on top of the best performing uh, AFM. So uh, with this, I thank you for listening and uh, we are open for questions. Great, thank you very much. Um, we have a number of questions. I will uh, try to group them together uh, sort of through, the, through how they came up in the presentation. Uh, if we don't get your question, we certainly will be able to uh, follow up um, uh, after the uh, after the webinar. Also, I'd like to uh, note that the PDF of the webinar, as well as a recording of the actual presentation, uh, will be available uh, on our website uh, archives. Okay, so uh, I'd like to start, I guess, with some uh, questions uh, relating to uh, the actual electrochemical cell. So uh, first question is, what is the square item sandwiched uh, in the cell? Is that the sample? Uh, does it have to be uh, this size, i.e. coming out of the cell? So let me uh, <clears throat> uh, flip to that slide and uh, I'll give you some explanation to that. <clears throat> So the sample doesn't have to be a square. Um, it could be circular. Um, it could be that big or smaller. If you have a smaller sample, uh, we have a small sample adapter, which you uh, you glue your sample on the uh, adapter, then it will fit into the cell. OK, I think along those lines, we have a uh, similar question. How, how the, how and just to paraphrase, how is the connection with the working electrode done in the cell? Is there a big area of conductive material exposed to the solution? Uh, yes, that's, um, yes, exactly. Actually, uh, what's shown here in this picture is a, a, a platinum ring uh, for conventional electrochemical uh, work. For lithium battery, what we use is actually a lithium foil. So you can put a lithium foil um, uh, surrounding the uh, perimeter of this square hole on the glass uh, cover, basically we uh, put down the lithium foil on this uh, glass cover, and that serves as a counter electrode. We can also use a small piece of lithium foil for the reference. So yeah, the area is actually quite big. Okay, could you explain again how electrolyte is put into the cell uh, and you don't have to look through the electrolyte to see the SEI. So I, I think maybe the question is, do you have to look through the electrolyte to see the SEI, or how do you get around the, the opaque nature of the electrolyte? Actually, um, actually, uh, in the AFM setup, uh, you know, in between in fluids, uh, the 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 uh, the AFM tip is actually immersed. Uh, let me see. I have a picture. Uh, yeah. So here, uh, let me uh, use this picture to um, to illustrate how it works. So 
you have this electrochemical cell, what you do is you fill this cell. This, this cell uh, uh, holds 2.5 milliliter uh, uh, electrolyte solution. And once you fill this cell, then you lower the FM, here's the tip, onto the surface. So you are not looking through the tip, actually, it's in contact with the surface. Um, yeah, that's how you add, your, uh, you add the fluid into the cell and uh, how um, the tip get access to the sample. Okay. So maybe I'll, there's some more on the cell, but maybe I'll uh, sort of use this as the last one so we can transition into some questions on the, the, the battery work. Uh, can the electrochemical cell work alone? Can it be packed inside of a dry box? Uh, and used in the air. Oh yeah, absolutely. Actually, I, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't mention because the focus now is for lithium battery. Actually, this design uh, doesn't have to be in the car box. You can use it outside, or um, it's kind of, I would say, portable. You could put it in the dry box. Uh, if not for FM, yes, you could. Uh, yeah, you use it in the dry box. Dry box. Okay, so now maybe we can transition to some questions on the on the battery, and this one is perhaps a good segue. Uh, how do you see the surface of the graphite from the AFM? It should be face to face to the cathode. Um, <clears throat> oh, it uh, looks like I can make use of this uh, this slide again. So um, uh, again, your your let's say now the graphite is your anode. It's you know put down on the bottom of this cell, the counter is on top on this uh, uh, cover glass, so it's in parallel in that way. Uh, however, there uh, is indeed a spacing between the counter and uh, or, uh, or cathode and your uh, anode. This is, uh, this is different from a real battery where uh, these, the Cathode and the anode are really close together, separated by, uh, let's say, cell guard. Uh, here we, we are not using cell cell guard. Uh, so uh, this is is one. Yeah, the, you know, it's roughly uh, uh, you know facing each other. However, we do need to uh, have a hole there for AFM to get into the uh, working electrode. In that, the uh, the geometry or the uh, placement of the electrodes are uh, uh, are slightly different than a real battery. Is there any way to establish the chemical nature of the SCI layer through an in-situ method, through an in-situ method which might complement the AFM images? Uh, we have a mode. Uh, we have a, a colocalized Raman with uh, AFM. Uh, I think, uh, but for now, I have to. I have to admit, uh, it's. Um, if you do it in in uh, ambient, I mean in argon, but without liquid, that's uh, that's doable. Uh, uh, in liquid, it's it's hard to do. You know, uh, the uh, the solvent will interfere strongly with the Raman signal. Uh, how do we decide what force is used to remove the SCI layer without damaging the film itself? Actually, when we remove the SCI layer, it's kind of damaging. You are scratching away. Uh, so we, you know, I think two criteria we, we watch, uh, basically, it's really experimentally. Uh, we try to use, let's say we use a small force, uh, uh, 50 piconewton or 100 piconewton, and we take an image, and then we scan again the same area. We see whether uh, 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 whether what we saw in the previous images are still there. That's one way to see whether it, it has scratched away the SER layer. Uh, it's really experimental. We, we, you know, we incrementally increase the force until we see the SER layer is damaged. But since we can control the force uh, precisely, so we know at which point it will go away. Could we get similar data with conductive AFM? Uh, EC cell is very beneficial, but what about conductive AFM for obtaining uh, a potential plot? Conductive AFM uh, potential. Um, 
I, I'm not sure I understand this question for Kentucky AFM. I think that's a good a good idea uh, if you um, use a Kentucky tip and to look at uh, local uh, lights, the current density to get uh, local electrochemical information, local activity, electrochemical activity. That's a good idea. But uh, you you know you get a one or two things. Either you get a localized current or localized potential. You can you cannot get them uh, simultaneously. Uh, but it's a, it's a it's a I think it's a good idea. You can um, let's say one time you use the chip as a uh, let's say counter electrode or second working electrode. You measure the local current um, on the nanoscale, or you can use the conductive chip as the reference reference electrode so you can measure the local potential variation on the nano scale. Um, that's a, uh, that's a, you know that's a very promising prospect, but I have to point out for now uh, there's uh, no commercially available conductive probe that works in uh, in electrolyte solutions yet. Uh, the question is uh, can you use uh, this setup for measuring, uh, conducting a impedance analysis for solid oxide fuel cells. Um, I have to think about that. Uh, I'll get back to you later. Okay. Uh, a question here is about uh, if you've done this in tapping mode, uh, and also do you see uh, uh, bubbles forming? I think the bubble you mean um, bubbles? Do you mean real bubble or no? No, let me take uh, take my guesses. If you mean uh, uh, real bubble, you know, gas evolution from the reaction. Um, I mean, in this cell, the the it's the volume is pretty big, and if there is any actually we notice when there's there are bubbles, they rarely get into uh, the FM chip. So it doesn't interfere with the measurement, regardless it's contact mode, tapping mode, or peak force tapping mode. Uh, if you uh, mean uh, you know the blisters uh, of a form, if, uh, uh, if you mean the bu in a, uh, the bubble by the blisters form, I think you can use either uh, either mode. You know we do have uh, you know contact uh, uh, tapping and peak force tapping uh, available. Okay, here we have uh, two questions about the, the tip. Uh, one is, uh, what is the effect of current onto the tip? And the other is, how do you prevent lithium from uh, intercalating into the AFM tip? So you can answer them either together or separate. Um, sorry. Well, what is the oh, memory? Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, what, what is the effect of current on the AFM tip? So the AFM tip is uh, for now, for, you know, regular uh, AFM, what we have right now, uh, the AFM tip is not connected electrically. However, the tip touches, intermittently touches the surface, and then it may become part of the working electrode, in this case, anode, and the uh, reaction may happen on it, and we don't know, we, we, ha we don't have a way to measure was a current on the chip. But in theory, none, but once it uh, connects to the sample, there may be some reaction there. Um, now actually, I can go to the second question. So uh, whether the FM chip is stable in a lithium electrolyte solution, uh, we haven't, uh, uh, we haven't uh, uh, investigated that, but uh, we do have some, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, thought about about that. Well, AFM tip, especially the tip now we are using, is a silicon, and we know silicon is a good anode, and the lithium could intercalate into it. Actually, uh, you know, change the, uh, sh the 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 geometry, the volume of the tip uh, quite a bit. Uh, uh, but we don't know exactly what what happened there. We could, for example, we could uh, uh, use uh, tip check or somehow to to check the shape of the tip, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look into that. Okay, here's a, here's a sort of a group of practical questions on the measurement. So what kind of AFM probe is it? 
what is the spring constant, and how do you change the chip uh, and realign the laser inside the glove box? So uh, I will, uh, you know, take the uh, easier part first. So to do a uh, to change the chip and align the laser, you know, it can be done in the glove box, and actually it's fairly straightforward. And initially I thought it's hard, but after uh, you know half day one day practice, actually you can just do that. Uh, uh, also, to make that easier, we have an alignment station uh, on on the back of the icon system. So basically, you go there, you see the tip, you see the laser spot, and you just move the laser onto the end of the cantilever. And that's one. Uh, secondly, we have a, a blind engage feature um, uh, that allows you to uh, to remember the X X, Y, Z position of the sample, and uh, after you add liquid, you can just uh, just go there blindly without uh, uh, looking really. So that feature will make uh, the uh, tip uh, tip change, tip alignment and uh, engage much easier. Can you uh, comment on the the probe you use for these experiments? Oh, so for and the, the spring constant. Yeah, for the probes, we actually have tried a wide variety of probes and. Uh, uh, the, you know, since the nature of this SEL layer is, is so fragile, we try to use uh, very low spring constant. The lowest we have used is 0 0.1, uh, actually 0 0.06 Newton per meter. Then also we use like a, a 2 Newton per meter, and it has, um, um, I would say both works in this range. We can we can uh, we can control the force uh, down to 50, 100 piconewton level. But if you use higher spring constant, uh, uh, that may that will be a problem. Uh, so that's the spring constant. And one thing we are actually we uh, we watch closely is uh, in, in addition to the spring constant is the resonance frequency or the lever in the in the electrolyte solution. I want to point out the electrolyte solution is very viscous. It's, uh, it's twice that of water, so it damps the uh, the uh, uh, damps the uh, tip motion a lot, and also it creates a hydrodynamic effect to the tip. So we have to use um, we have to balance out the spring constant, the resonance, and um, yeah, and we have have to use actually uh, smaller. A smaller short levers to to mitigate the uh, hydrodynamic effect there. And just a follow up to that came in. What what is the probe material? Uh, the probe material, uh, the the lever is uh, uh, is silicon nitride, and the tip is usually uh, silicon. So it's really a com combination of the uh, a smaller spring constant of the silicon nitride and also a sharp tip of a silicon. Okay, so there, there are actually quite a few questions on uh, uh, Peak Force Q&M, uh, which uh, I guess I'll, I'll start into now. Uh, how could we check the modulus from the AFM image? Uh, uh, I'll ask Steve to answer this question. So we, uh, you know, we have a standard process for uh, determining the mod modulus and calibrating uh, the system, and that can be uh, done either through uh, an absolute method where you actually calibrate the deflection sensitivity, the spring constant, and the size of the tip, or a, a relative method uh, where you uh, e examine uh, a, a substrate of, of known modulus and, and calibrate uh, from that. Uh, we've gotten very good results um, with both of these techniques and think that we are uh, accurate to within uh, about 10 percent if that's done, uh, uh, done carefully. Uh, there's also a very nice paper uh, out of NPL, which we can, uh, it's available on, on Nanoscale World, uh, but we can also uh, uh, put uh, a reference to in the follow-up that goes out with this email uh, about uh, the quantitative nature of uh, peak force q &M. Next question, can this instrument measure material properties of hardness or yield strength? Uh, so the the instrument can uh, doesn't measure either of those uh, properties directly. 
uh, as one of the channels, uh, such as uh, modulus adhesion or deformation, but the instrument will provide uh, a force curve or the raw data. And so any analysis which uh, you would like to do um, that can be done on a force curve can be uh, extracted from, from this technique. This setup is more like a combination of peak force Q&M and potentiostat, but not like the tuna module for the conventional CAFM. Uh, may I know whether the new setup allows current mapping function? The current. So um, for the tuna or connective FM, uh, if you do it without uh, adding liquid into the into the cell, then you can you can get a current map there to measure the uh, connectivity uh, or different uh, components in the composite materials. Uh, that's a yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's similar to your your previous answer. That uh, really a, a tip uh, conductive a tip for conductive AFM uh, needs to be developed, and there is some good research certainly uh, in that area, but nothing uh, nothing commercially available. Uh, what materials are best suited for electrical connections, and does plating have additional added values? Um, not sure. So not sure actually, the question. <laughs> or yeah. So, um, well, I had to take a guess of this. Uh, you know, of, of this question. So, for the electrical connection to uh, to the to the different electrodes, let's say to the graphite, that one, you know, it's connected uh, from the back, and the connection is not in the uh, not in contact with liquid, so any connection is reliable. For the lithium foil, uh, we found out we do have to keep the lithium foil in the cell, and we have to bring uh, a wire to the cell to, to make a connection to the foil. For that, I, you know, I follow the advice from Dr. Ivan Lucas from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, and we should use nickel wires to make a connection to the lithium foil, uh, whether it's the counter or the reference. And uh, we did measure the uh, open circuit potential of uh, 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 HOPG versus lithium foil. It doesn't look like uh, to make any difference. So I think it's uh, it's accepted uh, uh, connect, connecting what you, uh, Nico. It's good. Uh, is it possible to observe surface energy in a polymeric system with an electrochemical cell? Surface energy. Um, so can you explain to me what's? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure of the uh, uh, of the question either. Do you think uh, it's referring to uh, Kelvin probe or surface potential? Okay, so uh, okay, uh, Steve suggests that's probably by surface energy. If you mean that by uh, by uh, you know, work function, then you you could do Kelvin uh, probe force microscopy. You can get to this uh, the uh, potential uh, work function of H materials. Uh, uh, that's a that's a yes, but it has to be done uh, in uh, in the gas atmosphere, not in liquid. Uh, if you mean by you know uh, when you do AFM, or you, if you want uh, if you mean the dissipation energy. And uh, yes, you can get that from the uh, uh, peak force QNM. Yeah, yeah good. that's okay. Uh, yeah, so if, if you ask that question and you'd like to uh, follow up, we will try to uh, get it in the remaining few minutes. Otherwise, we can follow up with you online. There was a second part of that question, which is, uh, is it possible to use the harmonic system for obtaining uh, the same result you just showed? Uh, I have not tried. I, I but uh, my guess is um, the. The harmonic uh, probes are pretty stiff. Um, I I don't know what kind of minimum force we can achieve on that. Uh, we haven't tried. Okay, and uh, let's see. I think uh, we have time for one more question here. Maybe I will combine it into two, uh, a couple more just on the process. Uh, so what is the actual scan range of the cell? The, the, the the cell itself um, 
you can go, uh, you know, in x y plus x y direction, you can go uh, seven millimeters, or you say plus minus three point five millimeters. So this Mic can I say micrometer. Oh, I mean, you can, the area you can access oh. is seven millimeters square, okay. and uh, the scan size, the AFM scan size is um, uh, my 90 micrometers uh, maximum in X, Y. And in this direction, it's uh, nine micrometers, so if you have rough samples, uh, usually you all you, you do, and it uh, accommodates uh, pretty rough samples. Okay, and what was the resonant frequency range of the uh, the cantilevers that you used? Well, so the resonance frequency in, in air, uh, uh, it's, we used like a, a 10 a kilohertz all the way to uh, 400 kilohertz. We are trying to you know to see which uh, fits best. And but uh, the uh, since you bring up, uh, bring this up, I will you know. Uh, uh, comment a little bit more. So once they get into this liquid, this liquid is so viscous, and the resonance will uh, will be much lower. Uh, for those, you know, around 100 kilohertz in the, in this electrolyte solution, it end up with like uh, around 10 kilohertz, and the Q is very small. It's like around one. So that actually gives a problem. Uh, it you know you the the whole the thermal noise will be seen in the FM measurement uh, to increase the noise floor. So, and we also try the higher res resonance, which can be, um, you know, uh, a few tens of kilohertz all, all the way to 100 kilohertz, and that that helps with the with the noise floor. Um, yes, so that's a uh, that's a, a very important parameter. Okay, we have a, a number of other questions. Uh, quite a few of them are on uh, compatibility uh, with uh, with the different in instruments. Uh, we have uh, some other additional technical questions, which I don't think that we're going to uh, have time to answer, but we will uh, certainly follow up uh, with all of you uh, offline. So uh, thank you again to all of you for uh, attending uh, our webinar uh, and for your questions, and thank you to uh, Chun Zing Lee for the uh, for the excellent presentation. And uh, as you log off, please be sure to answer uh, the uh, the exit survey. We'll also be uh, uh, sending out a, a summary email that'll have links uh, to the uh, to the webinar download, so you can uh, have a copy for your file. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.